So this video is going to show you how to make placemats from fabric panels like this one shown. And this is part of a 12 month series. So there's going to be a panel with six placemats on it for each month and then also three coordinating prints. So I'm going to show you how to put one of these together, including the yardage that you would need from the prints to do backings, assuming that you are going to make all six. So let's get started. To prepare the main part of the placemat for quilting, you need three things. You need the placemat design, which I have cut out with extra around. It is 11 by 18 within the colored area. So that's going to be the finished size of your placemat. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a piece of batting, whatever kind you prefer. I just use the same kind I use for quilting because I have a big roll of it. You're going to cut it bigger than your placemat. So I think this one is about 14 by 20. You just want it bigger. And then you need your backing fabric. So I am using one of the three prints that goes along with the November placemat series. And I'm choosing the brown to go on the back of this turkey. And again, this needs to be larger than your placemat as well. So I cut this to 14 and a half by basically half of a width of fabric. I don't bother cutting the selvage off because that'll get cut off later. So I'm doing two placemats with each of the colors. So there's three different colorways that go along with each month of the series. And for November, it is this cute text print. So I'm gonna use the brown in the example. And then I've also used kind of this orange and the burgundy. And here are the other two pumpkins and I'll show you all six at the end. In order to do two backings and the binding for two different placemats, you need to have three quarters of a yard of this fabric. And I just always do my little sketches. So you're gonna cut from that, you're going to cut four two and a half inch strips for the binding and then a 14 and a half inch here by half of the width. So I just cut the 14 and a half trim off the very edge and I'm good to go. So now let's put this together. We're going to put this right side down. Then we're going to put the batting. And then we're going to put the placemat on top. Because we're binding it, we need everything to be in the direction it's going to be when finished. And then remember, if your backing is directional, make sure you have it the direction you want it to be in relation to the placemat top. Because if we did it this way, it's just going to look like one of them is upside down. So I like them going in the same direction. So we're just making a little sandwich. And then you're just going to grab some pins and pin it together and then take it to your sewing machine and quilt this however you want. All right, since this isn't a huge quilt, I think that's gonna be enough to get us to the sewing machine with everything intact. So let's go do some quilting. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a thread, a red thread that coordinates with this border, and I'm gonna sew just a straight stitch around both the outside and the inside of that to give it a little bit of dimension and really hold that placemat together. I did things slightly backwards just because I already had the red thread in my sewing machine and I didn't have a lot of it. It was about to run out. So normally I would uh, baste the around the very outside of my placemat first, but it's fine to do it second. So I set my sewing machine to the longest stitch length and I'm just gonna quickly go around the outside. Now, if you watch that, you might notice that I was a little sloppy and sometimes it wasn't straight, but that's okay because the goal of this is just to hold everything in place so that your backing, your, your batting, and the placemat aren't slipping. A lot of the stitching will be cut off. You want to make sure it does not go very far inside your placemat because if it goes beyond that quarter inch where you're going to put your 
your binding, it's gonna show. And this is truly just quick stitches to secure everything. Now I'm going to switch out my needle and get ready to do some free motion on this. And again, not necessary. You can quilt this however you want, but I'm just gonna show you in super fast speed what I'm going to do. I have big plans for this little turkey of mine. I have that little motion foot on here. Sometimes people ask me what kind of sewing machine I have. I have the Janome, let's see. M7 Continental, excuse that morning light coming in from the back. So now I'm gonna to go to my touch screen and I'm going to go to the free motion and I have that all set up. So now let's get sewing. For free motion quilting, the gloves are key. You have to have the grippy gloves so that your hands aren't sliding and you can move your fabric around well. And then it is just like it says, free. Do what you want. So I switched to a brown thread to do some detail on the turkey itself. As you can see, it is all quilted and I went around a lot of the feathers, around the pumpkins, some of the leaves, the gourds, the corn, and then just did some squiggles in the white space. Now we're gonna take it back to our cutting mat and trim it and get ready to do the binding. So now you're gonna put that back on your cutting mat and flatten it out, try and get it straightened out. And we're going to trim it to size-ish. Once you do the quilting, sometimes it moves a little bit. You just wanna make sure, so you'll see there's gonna be a little bit of white showing there, but you wanna make sure it is less than a quarter inch because binding will be sewn a quarter inch in. So as long as any outside is is less than a quarter inch, you'll be fine. Losing my words. All right, now we just need to bind it. To make the seam binding, you're going to need two strips, two and a half inches wide for each of your placemats. And then you need to get them together so that they are one strip. So you're going to place one piece down with the right side up. And if there's any directionality to it, make sure it's the way you're looking at it. So don't, don't have it so it looks upside down to you. Have it this way and have the end there. Now you're going to take your second piece and you're going to kind of line it up to make sure the directionality is the same. Then you're going to turn it over, move it up so that they cross. So the cut edge is even with this edge and this edge, basically, so it's nice and square. You don't want it tilted. You want it nice and squared off. Then, if you feel confident about it, you can just turn it and sew straight, or if you want to add a guideline, keep a little one of my little cute cut rulers that Riley Blake gave me as a designer, and I go from the corners, and then you can either use a fabric marker or I'm just throwing a chalk line on there. So now I have a guide to make sure I get that sewn properly. So we're just gonna turn and sew across there. The next step is not, no, 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 not to cut. The next step is to fold it open and just double check that everything is correct. And actually one-sided, or printed fabric is a lot easier to make seam binding out of than solids because if you're doing a row where you're putting multiple strips together for solids, sometimes you get one this way and one backwards. So always, always check and make sure things are straight and in the correct direction before you cut off the edge. So you can either use your rotary cutter or 
just scissors. I just use what I have right here and cut about a quarter inch from the edge or from the stitch line rather, not the edge. And then you're gonna take this to your ironing board and press that open. So we've pressed open that seam. And now to finish preparing your seam binding, you're simply going to fold it in half, wrong sides together and press all the way along. Then you're also going to look if you have any little dog ears sticking out from where you have sewn two strips together, you're going to clip those. So now my binding is ready to go. So adding the binding, if you aren't super familiar, if you don't do a lot of quilting, you're going to take the binding that we made, have the folded edge going inside your placemat and lining the raw edge up with the raw edge of the placemat. I always keep about eight to 10 inches free and I usually start on the bottom. So I'm just gonna line that up and now I have a straight, a straight presser foot on. This one is actually a quarter inch. So if I go along the edge of the foot, I'm gonna have the exact seam allowance that I want. So we're gonna start that and you're gonna sew down until you're a quarter inch from this edge and then we're going to twist and come off of it at an angle. And I kind of lift the binding so I can see where I am. Now I'm gonna twist that and just sew straight off the edge. Now the secret to getting well mitered corners, which means getting that when you fold this over, that the corner is nice and cornerish and not buckled or pulled, is how you fold your binding when you get to these corners. So it's coming straight off the edge and then you're going to fold it up so that the, the raw edge of your binding is in a straight line with this edge and that this fold line is parallel to this edge. Then you're going to fold this down and make sure this top fold is lined up with the raw edge that we just sewed and that this raw edge is lined up with where we're going to sew. So now we're gonna go down the side and we're gonna do the same thing at this next corner. I just go slow at the end. Make sure I'm kind of peeking under the binding. Lift my foot, turn it so it's gonna come off that, off that corner. All right, so let's do that corner one more, to show you how to do that again. So it's going straight. Now we're gonna fold it up. Fold it straight up so that you have a straight line here and this fold is parallel to this. Then we're gonna bring it straight down. I'm trying to give you all the angles here. so that that fold is lined up perfectly with that raw edge and that this raw edge is now gonna come down. Okay, now that we've gone most of the way around and we have our, our lengths, we're going to need to get these two pieces sewn together so that you can't tell. So we're gonna get it sewn at an angle just like we did when we put the first two pieces together. And so here's how we're gonna do this. You're going to pick the point about in the middle but, and you're going to lay your binding down kind of like it's sewn and then you're gonna fold it back up. And you're going to really crease it. I just run it. I just use my nails. You can use a pressing tool. You can use a ruler. You could take this ruler that we're gonna use in a minute and just 
go along there. Just we're gonna need to know where exactly where that fold is in a minute. Now we're gonna do the same thing from the bottom. We're gonna put this up and we're going to fold it exactly matching where that other fold is. And then we can use the ruler again. Nails. All right, the other things we're gonna need for this is a clip or a clothespin, um, fabric marker or chalk, and a ruler. All right, so we have that lined up. Now what we're gonna do is you're going to, the one coming towards you, you're gonna unfold that and you're gonna open it with the right side up. Then you're gonna take your ruler and put it along that fold line and draw a line so we know where that is. See that yellow? Now, this one's important because sometimes I do it backwards. We're gonna open the bottom one and we're going to turn, twist your hand to the left and open it to the inside. I'm gonna mark this line just like we did the other one. Okay, now this part I think makes it all easier. I fold up my, my placemat or my quilt or whatever I'm binding and I clip it so that I have some more room with my binding to put it together. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put these two pieces of binding perpendicular to each other and I'm going to line up the edge, the folded edge of the inside on the outside of this, this cut edge with this line that we drew. And then we're gonna sew this way. So if you're confident, you can just put it on your sewing machine. If you want a guideline, just put your ruler there. Draw that. And we're gonna sew along that line. Never, ever, ever cut before you check, you test this. So you're gonna take this off and you wanna make sure that this is nice and flat because if you have turned one of these the wrong direction before sewing it together, it's going to be twisted. And then you would just pull the seam out and redo it. But if you've cut it already, you're going to have to redo all of your binding, which that would be awful. But anyway, we did that correctly. So now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut about a quarter inch from that stitch line to get these ends off. Okay, so I press that, I press that down, and now you can see it looks, it's hooked in there seamlessly. So I'm going to overlap a little bit where the stitching ended. And just sew right along. You just have to sew down to where your sewing started. Then just double check, you might have some dog ears to snip because you don't want that to mess up how it is gonna fold over. When we take it back to the ironing board. You can trim all of these, all of these ends. If there's big ones, you might want to because they might sneak through on the end, but personal preference. You can either use your scissors or take it back, do a quick rotary cutter around the edges. Now that we have our binding sewn on with the quarter inch seam, we're going to go from the front and press the seam binding out. Just don't worry about the corners right now. We're going to work on them on the other side. You can see I didn't I didn't cut all those little threads, so you might have some to pull or maybe trim. Now we're gonna turn it over 
and flip those corners. And I like to press over the long ends first. And when you're doing that, you wanna make sure that this, this point in there is flat and that you get a nice corner there, like you get this line going as straight as possible. So I do both long ends first. Oh boy, this is a little bit of a bummer. We have the, where we attach the two coming right at that point. So it's making it a little bit fatter, but we'll figure it out. So that point's not gonna be quite as crisp. Now you're gonna fold this down and you'll see that, that point is working nicely because of how we sewed the binding on and then how we just press that to make sure we had a good corner. And repeat on the other side. All right, now, if you wanna hand stitch this, it's gonna be less visible and it won't be visible at all on the other side. It's more of a purist way of doing it. You would just put some pins, grab your thread and needle, stitch that together. I do not have the patience or the wrist strength. I like to keep my wrists nice and strong for painting. So I am going to be machine stitching, which will get a line of stitching on this side, but that's the choice I am making. So for that, I need glue, washable, washable school glue and clips. And then I also put a little tag on all of my things. So I have that ready to go as well. And I like to have that on the bottom. So I just, I'm gonna double check that this is the bottom. So just like with the pressing, I always start on the long edge edges. I run, a, I need to go get more glue. I run a thin bead of glue all the way along and I press it down that's the top edge and then I'll put maybe two or three pin clips just so it stays doesn't like pop up on me while it's drying and I'll do that on the bottom and I put my tag in so I don't have to pull it apart and unglue later. And now I'm just gonna do the sides and make sure you get a little dot right at that corner. And you always wanna get a clip on that corner because that's the most likely to pop up before it gets dry. The reason I like to glue that is because it keeps everything, once the glue is dry and you go to sew it, it keeps everything in place. So your binding isn't going to slip and you're more likely to have a very nice even line around here. So now I'm just gonna let this be half hour or so until that is dry. And then I will show you how I stitch around that to complete it. Now that the glue is dried, it is time to machine stitch our binding so that our placemat is done. So I'm gonna show you first this one. So this one I sewed from the back. So I just made sure, I tried to stay, you know, as an even amount from the edge, but I also made sure that the edge of my binding was, was caught all the way around. You will notice, however, that on the front, it's not completely even to where the edge of the binding is. So if that bothers you, you can sew from the front, which is what I'm gonna do in this example, so that this will be very even from where the edge of the binding is, but then you will have to turn it over and check because there may be a spot or two where it doesn't quite catch, and then you would just need to hand stitch that area. So it's totally up to you. This way is a little bit faster, a little less consistent as far as the edging. Um, so let's try it.
And once the glue is dried, you can just take all these clips off at once. They're not really holding things together like they would in a traditional project. All right, so I'm going to do this about, let's see. The tricky part is figuring out how far you can go and still be catching your binding on the back if you wanna sew from the front. Okay, so here's how I'm gonna figure that out. I'm going to fold it over so I can see the front and the back. So right, my finger is at the edge of the binding on the back. So if I were to do a quarter inch, I'm going to miss that binding a bit. So I'm going to run it about an eighth of an inch on the front side. So let's just give it a shot and see what happens. All right, so sewing from the front, as you can see, gives a much more consistent line in relation to the edge of the binding. Now let's just check the back and it looks like we've caught it all. Some of it, it's a bit farther, but because it's folded in half, it doesn't matter. So yeah, it's, it's a bit deeper in than we might have done had we sewn it on the other side. But the front is what you're gonna see the most. So I often prefer to do this method. May I introduce you to the first in a 12 month placemat program. These are the six placemats for November. Three have quotes, happy Thanksgiving, living gratitude, Fall is my favorite color. You'll also notice there are three different coordinating prints. This text print in three colors, the orange, the red, and we have pumpkins, cornucopia, and then also the brown. And we finish with my favorite turkey, which I actually painted on Thanksgiving Day 2020, when there were a lot less people at Thanksgiving, so I had time to pick up my paintbrushes and make this cute guy. So anyway, these are available and there are going to be 11 more months to come. So ask at your favorite fabric retailer that carries Riley Blake Designs if they are carrying this series.